Well, it is wedding season, and we all love celebrating these big life events, but sometimes it's hard to know what to do and how to act appropriately. <laughs> this morning, we're joined by Chicago's etiquette expert, Ellen Erickson, to help us answer some common questions. Good morning to you, Ellen. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Okay, the first thing that, uh, that you get is the invite, obviously. Then you got to get the gift. What are the rules of thumb when it comes to how much to spend on this gift? Uh, so there really isn't a correct or incorrect amount of money to spend on a gift. Keep two things in mind. One is your affection for the bride and groom, and the second is your budget. Okay. Um, that's, that's a good answer. That's good to know. All right. One thing that always goes to my, through my head, there's this thing going around about, okay, you have a year from the date of the wedding to actually get that gift. Is that true or not? Do you actually have a year, or is it rude to wait that long? So ideally, you should have the gift, send the gift to the bride or the couple's home prior to the wedding. Um, otherwise, we do delay it and longer than we'd really like to. So if it is delayed, when you send it, have a written note explaining the delay. Okay, so explain that delay. All right. Uh, how quick to RSVP? A lot of people have invites sitting on their fridge right now. They may be sitting on it. How quickly should you get back to the couple? Right away. It's really only polite. They need a head count. So as soon as you get it in the mail, you fill out the reply card, it's in the mailbox the next day. Okay. Now, um, if you get an invite for an out-of-town wedding of a colleague, let's say a colleague you work with, you're not that close to, do you have to go to that? You should never feel obligated to go to anything, but with that, I will say that these occasions don't happen very often in people's lives, and so um, I would RSVP if you can't make it that you can't. I would also in person state to the person why you can't make it and that you're very apologetic about it. Gotcha. And then I would also do something nice for the person. I would still give them a gift, have a small shower with other colleagues after work, something that's appropriate. So still send a gift even if you don't, uh, or give a gift even if you don't make it to the actual event. Yes, because you see this person every day. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, a lot of people um, wondering, okay, it's, it's summer now. Um, do we wear the full suit as guys to the wedding with the tie? Um, or is there flexibility there? Well, it all depends. Uh, two things. When you get the invitation, see if they state a dress code okay. on the invitation. And so go with that. I'll say black tie, white tie, whatever it might be. Um, it also depends on the time of day. Daytime weddings are typically more casual. You can get away without the full suit mm -hmm. for a man during daytime. Uh, evening, typically a suit, cocktail dress. For How about early. ladies? Cocktail dress for lady. And for the day, uh, for night, and for the daytime, a sundress. Uh, and they send dress, flats or heels is, is fine for more casual. Ellen Erickson, great advice as we get into wedding season. We appreciate you being here this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks.